How do we stay motivated when following our passions? I'll be talking about that today. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner and welcome to another episode of Extraordinary Women TV. This is a show where we talk about putting our dreams into action. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Joining me in the studio is Sandra Abali. She is the owner of Succulent Chocolates and Sweets. We're going to be talking about all things chocolate, and believe me, I'm really looking forward to this one. Hello, Sandra. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great having you here. Now, before we actually jump into our interview, I, I want to point out something to our viewers. Um, we have something beautiful sitting between us here. Um, Let's talk about what is this piece that we're looking at here. So this is a form of chocolate art. It's all 100% edible chocolate. And what we do is we form the chocolate into different shapes and molds. And we create these beautiful, lovely edible creations. Now, you are uh, known as to have made Canada's best chocolate. That's right. Okay, so how'd you get that handle? So I recently competed at the World Chocolate Masters competition and I was given the honor of Canada's best bonbon. And that was one of the five categories that we had to present in that nine hour competition. I mean, how do you get through that time making chocolate without wanting to eat it all? <laughs> That's what I want to know. A lot of self-control. <laughs> yeah. You know how they say, you know, when you're around it so much that you eventually stop wanting and you stop craving it? That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for verifying that. <laughs> Okay, so how did you start making chocolate? I love chocolate ever since I was a little girl. I was always fascinated by it. I used to hide stashes under my bed so my mother wouldn't find it. And uh, after I finished my degree at Ryerson University, I decided, you know, I really want to follow my passion. And so I found the best pastry school in the world, and that's called the French Pastry School in Chicago. And uh, I learned from the best. It was a beautiful experience. And then I came back and I decided I really want to specialize in chocolate. And you're a young entrepreneur. I mean, you, this is really great. You've become very successful doing what you're doing. Yes. Following my passion has opened up a lot of doors for me. And that with a lot of hard work. <laughs> and uh, I'm really happy to have just opened up my own business, Succulent Chocolates and Sweets. And we're going to be making these beautiful hand-painted chocolates. Now, how... Um because there's, there's many different ways, or there's, there's so much different kind of chocolate now with different spices that, like there's so much that can go yeah. into chocolate. What's your favorite? I think it really depends on the mood that I'm in, the flavor that I'm looking for. I really prefer a peanut butter uh, combination, which is what the award-winning chocolate is. That's a caramelized apple with a salted peanut butter ganache. So that one is always near and dear to my heart because of the win. But another one that I'm really preferring right now is fresh mint. And mint? Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so that one is infused with real mint leaves. And then another one that we're working on in, that's a little bit more, I guess you can say outside of the box, would be a mango and curry combination. That sounds really amazing. And I noticed that you have one that has a, that's spicy. It's got yes. pepper in it. Yeah, we it? have one infused with uh, Thai chili peppers. Wow. And so I'm really passionate about having the flavor shine through my chocolate. Uh, sometimes when you get mass produced chocolate, the flavor kind of dies away as it sits on the shelf. But with an artisan chocolate, we really want you to be able to bite into the chocolate and know the flavor right away. So we use all natural bold flavors. So for example, the chai chili, I, I, I roast the chilies myself and um, I make my own chili paste, and that's how the flavor comes uh, so through. That's, that's really quite involved. Wow. It is. It, it is definitely that's a process. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But it's worth it. <laughs> and you have your hands in chocolate uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think, oh my God, I just want to get away from it? No. <laughs> I love being in the kitchen. I yeah. do. It's kind of like my, my zen place. I love to... Um, to just be creating and, and constantly flavor developing. In terms of your competition, the World Masters, 
Uh, what was that experience like? It was it was a very stressful day, <laughs> but it was definitely worth every uh, blood, sweat, and tear that went into it. It was a really intense nine-hour competition. How does it start, though? So it started at 7 a.m., and um, it, it was a solo competition, so we didn't have any sous chefs or anything. Uh, we had our recipes prepared, and at certain time intervals, we had to present certain dishes. So there was, you were always continuously working against the clock. And uh, let me tell you, things don't always go your way. <laughs> or so they so often don't. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Murphy's Law does come into yeah. place. Um, but you know what, you have to think quick on your toes and you have to, um, you have to work with the conditions that you're given. That's so cool. So where are you going to go with, with this chocolate company of yours? Um, you know what, I'm just I'm so excited to be doing what I love and to be uh, sharing my passion with chocolate with others. I really want to educate people about chocolate. There's, I find a little bit of a disconnect between um, where chocolate comes from in terms of the actual cacao plant and the trees and how you know the cocoa pot is picked right off the tree by hand. And so, what do, what is the what, what do people normally think that? Uh, I find that just a lot of people don't think about it. You know, right. we just consume our, our chocolate, and there's no um, real appreciation for how it gets to that point, because there's so many different stages. You think, well, you might have to sell an awful lot of chocolate to, to be successful. I mean, what's been your experience? We at Cycle and Chocolates, we're all about creating a chocolate experience, not just selling off a one, one pack of 12. So we want you to come in, we want you to um, interact with the chocolate. And we do that by having chocolate workshops, where I would even come into your home and teach you how to make the chocolate or what's really popular right now is our chocolate and wine pairing parties. So we rely on other forms other than just selling the box of chocolate to create an overall experience. And your chocolates are available online? That's right. Yeah, right. we ship throughout the GTA. Cool. And so where can people buy them? Uh, www.succulentchocolates.com Give us a sense of um, what does a day look like for you? Well, we start by, by tempering the chocolate. And that's a really important stage of chocolate making because chocolate is a very uh, finicky medium. It has to be at exactly the right temperature in order to achieve the beautiful shine that you see on the bonbons. So we go through that process of taking it up in temperature, bringing it back down, taking it back up again. And then we prepare our molds. So for something like this, for the winning bonbon that was sprayed three times by hand. And um, once the molds are prepared and ready, then we go through and we make the shells. So we would take our mold of, of 28 cavities, so it would look like um, a semi-sphere upside down, and then we would fill it with chocolate, and then we would um, let it sit for a minute so it develops a nice wall, and then we take that mold and we turn it upside down, we bang out all the chocolate. And then that's how we get the beautiful shell. And then once the shell is set, we fill it with different flavors of ganache. And then that, that takes you into uh, flavor com combining and whatever flavor has been ordered. And then once the ganache is set, we go back to the tempered chocolate and we put another layer on top and that would be the cap. And then that has to sit. So it is a little bit of a labor intensive process to make the bonbons. Uh, so you must be um, everyone's favorite person when you, you come to a dinner party or... Yes. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without bringing chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> People always ask, where's the chocolate? And your background is Italian? Yes. Yes. Food has always been a very integral part of our family and our culture. There's always um, a festivity or an event where we're gathered around the kitchen table and we're, we're sharing stories and laughter over food. So what does your family think about you uh, now making Canada's best chocolate? They're extremely proud. I'm very lucky to have um, a wonderful network of people around me that are very supportive of my uh, passion, my creativity. And I'm also really lucky to have parents who are entrepreneurs. So they've helped me a lot in terms of helping to build my business and get to where I'm at today. Do you have uh, any role models or... Um Th that are mentors? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, I've been really fortunate to have a few key women around me who have helped me and guided me uh, both in the culinary world and in the business world. 
So how do you stay motivated through, uh, through, this, through your business? I mean, you know, it is labor intensive. Um, it must um, take a lot of your energy. Mm -hmm. You obviously get energy from it. Uh, but how do you stay motivated to follow this passion of yours? It's hard, you know. I think the hardest thing that I've come across so far is balancing the business side of it with being in the kitchen. Um, and even though I love both, in the in the kitchen is where I find my my peace and where I I am most comfortable. So it's it's been a different uh, different set of challenges being in the business world. I know that uh, chocolate and wine paired together can be very very good. I mean, some people. How can you go wrong, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. How can you go wrong? So, what do you do until you do this? Yes, chocolate right. and wine pairing has definitely become a lot more trendy these days. Yeah. And people are always looking for a different alternative to pair with their wine. And chocolate is a perfect fit because it is very similar to wine in that you can have chocolate that comes from different parts of the world that tastes completely different. So, a lot of people think, well, 70% chocolate would taste the same no matter what. But you can get a chocolate that comes from Cuba, 70%, and a 70% that comes from Africa, and they can taste completely different. Very similar how wine, you can get a Merlot from, from Italy and a Merlot from Australia, and they would taste completely different. So what I do as a chocolatier is I take the wine that the client has requested to pair with, and I find the best origin chocolate that matches that wine and then I top it with different flavors that accentuate the wine. So for example, I recently did one that was a 75% chocolate from Tanzania, and it was topped with rosemaries and cranberry. And that really brought out the oaky flavor in the wine. I love it, and it means it's my good to know minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. Yes, so my uh, success tip would be to constantly push yourself outside of your comfort zone and to continuously grow and learn. Um, I found that that really paid off for me when I competed at the World Chocolate Masters competition. I was very nervous and very scared when I was first asked to compete, but um, with a lot of training and a lot of hard work, I have reaped wonderful rewards from that and it's opened a lot of doors for me. And that's good to know and thanks for that. Well, Sandra, um, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story. Uh, and loving the chocolate and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Well, for more information about Extraordinary Women TV and my guests and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com and I'd love to stay in touch with you. Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, you can connect with me at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.